السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا قبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وإمام الأولين والآخرين وعليه وصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Okay, my dear brothers and sisters, today we're going to discuss a very important and inshallah a very relevant topic which is feel the Quran. So before we go into details, we must understand why this topic is so important. To understand the importance of this topic, I will start with some very basic questions like always. And the first question is, Allah Rabbul Alameen gave us the Quran. What is the most important thing he wants us to do after reading it or after studying it or after reciting it. What is the most important thing? There are several things that he is expecting us to do. What is the most important thing? Follow and apply what it is mentioned. Right. The most important thing is Allah Rabbul Alameen wants us to follow and implement what we have understood. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Now, this is pretty straightforward, right? It's not a very difficult question. Now comes the sticky part. Do you find a difficulty in practicing the Quran? For example, you learn something new. How easy is it for you to just go and practice it? In a week, you learn five new things. Are you able to follow all the five things without any difficulty or do you find difficulty? No, there is difficulty in following. There is difficulty. What about others? Is there anybody here who says that, Alhamdulillah, it is so piece of cake for me? Whatever I learned from the Quran and I just go there and I practice it. Any 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 noble souls like that? Okay. So, okay. So, you can see that it is very difficult. Right? It is difficult for me also. The question is, why is it so difficult? Right? So, that, that's what we are trying to find out. Because ultimately, all these discussions, listening to uh, the lectures, you know, studying the translation, discussing it, attending Quran study circles, reciting the Quran, memorizing it, right? it all should lead to only one objective, which is implementing it in our life because there is guidance and that is exactly why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Quran down part. Not for memorizing it, not for reciting it in a melody as why these are all secondary. Implementation and practicing it is the most important and the fundamental objective. So we have to find out what is the hurdle and what is it that is making it very difficult for us to practice the Quran. So, let's analyze this. Anything, if you have to practice or implement, not just about the Quran, anything in life, it involves change. Right? For example, there is a particular food that you like, but you don't get that food. Now, you have to settle for a food that you don't like. Right? So, you have to adjust. So, there is a change that is involved. Any minor behavioral thing right you want to adjust there is a change involved any new thing you have to add there is a change involved either it's a change to your routine or change to your behavior change to your way you think change uh, to the way you speak whatever right so there is change involved ultimately and if you look at it anything you learn from the quran you want to implement there has to be a change it cannot be status quo if it is status quo then you are not implementing it is it clear so far simple right Make sense? Everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. But whenever the word change comes, you might know the people in corporate world, they know this term very well. There is always a resistance to change. Have you heard of this? In corporate world, you know, they bring in a new software or they bring in a new process change. You'll find most of the people like, Arey, yaar, why, why? Uh, why, why, why do they do this? Arey, why do they have to change the interface? Right? You feel that, right? Sometimes they change the bank interface, app interface. You sometimes get very frustrated. Even WhatsApp, right? Now, the I think the status now it has gone to the bottom instead of the top. For one or two days, right? It is a little irritating. Array, you know, it was fine, right? It was right there on the top. It was, why, why did they bring it now here at the bottom, right? You see, right, that, you know, this is a natural thing. So, there is always a resistance to change. Now, when it comes to the Quran, we have to identify why do we have this resistance? Whether knowingly, unknowingly, consciously, subconsciously, doesn't matter. But there is always this resistance to change. So the first question is, is the resistance to change, is it because of lack of knowledge? Or rather, is it always because of lack of knowledge? Yes, lack of knowledge can contribute. But is it always because of lack of knowledge? What do you think? We are not able to change because we don't have knowledge. Is it always like that? No. No. No, no. right? No. Yeah, everybody says no. 
I'll give a simple example, right? You're correct. I'll give a simple example. I've given three topics, tahajjud, zakat, and self-introspection. Let's say tahajjud. You find the best lecture on tahajjud in the world today. Currently, this is the best lecture. You listen to it, you know, the amount of information you get, the amount of inspiration you get is just unbelievable, right? And you watched it thoroughly, right, with a lot of sincerity. You try to internalize it. You do everything. Now, you've got complete knowledge. And this is the best lecture. Huh? This is the best lecture on Tahajjud. Now, what are the chances that just because you understood it very clearly and you are motivated to listen through it completely, you will be able to pray Tahajjud regularly? What are the chances? Is it easy? Right? No, mashallah, great lecture. I understood everything. Right? All right. From today onwards, Tahajjud. I'm not going to miss Tahajjud. Will it happen like that? Sometimes, no. Sometimes, no. yes. <laughs> no, it won't. Normally, it doesn't, right? It takes a lot of effort. Yes. Right? Even after that, you know, sometimes, you know, for several months, you would go even without praying tahajjud. It will happen. Same thing with zakat. Zakat, I'm bringing it because last week we discussed zakat, right? We spoke about uh, the, the view of uh, Islam on poverty and how zakat is a great system to reduce poverty. Despite that, I want, you know, this is a question for yourself. You need not answer it aloud. Many of you might have given zakat. Many of you might be giving zakat, inshallah. I want you to think about how many of you have decided that this year, my zakat, I will make sure that it makes an impact. It makes sure, or rather, I will make sure through my zakat that the poverty is reduced. How many of you have decided that? You need not answer it aloud. Ask yourself. And how many of you are following the same thing that you did last year? Last year, I gave it to my friend who is poor. I gave it to my relatives who are poor. Okay. Giving is no problem, but giving 5,000, 10,000 is the problem. Basically, you know, you know, they are not going to come out of it, right? Next year, again, they will come and stand, right? So giving, I mean, Alhamdulillah, you give. But are you giving enough to empower them? Giving 10,000, 15,000, what will they do with it? Can they do anything about it? No, right? But but many of us, right, might be continuing the same thing, status quo. Why? Because you did last year. The change, right? Although you might have understood Zakat and how revolutionary system it is, what difference it makes. But does it bring about a change? You see, right? It may not. Same thing, self-introspection. You know, everybody here knows about the importance of self-introspection. Let's talk about this Ramadan. Many people, right, we spend a lot of time in reciting the Quran, right, you know, going to the Tarawi, right, mashallah, everything is great. But how much time have we spent in doing self-introspection to ask ourselves, what are the problems I have? Am I becoming a better human being? At least in Ramadan. Right? In what way? Am I controlling my anger? Am I controlling my frustration? Right? Am I controlling my jealousy? Am I controlling my greed? Am I controlling my stinginess? Right? These are several questions. So this self-introspection, let's ask ourselves, how much time have we spent in this Ramadan? I'm not even talking about before all that, right? In this Ramadan. My question is, we all know about these topics, right? But why is it so difficult for us to implement this? It is because knowledge alone does not lead to action. Please remember this. A session like this can give you knowledge, can give you awareness, can give you exposure. But that does not mean it will translate into action. Today, people, they are running behind information, which is knowledge. They think the more I listen to a lecture, the more I read, the more I recite, the more I think, the more I discuss. My life will have a change. No, it may not. So what is the secret here? Okay, right now, okay, fine. I want to change. How do I change now? You are saying that information alone is not sufficient. Knowledge alone is not sufficient. So what do I need? Give me the recipe. Let's get right to it. For this, we have to go to psychology. And this is a very famous concept in psychology called cognitive triangle. They use the psychiatrists and psychologists and psychotherapists, they use this to bring about behavioral change, to bring about mindset change. It's a very, very powerful thing. And this is actually is there in the Quran. And, you know, we have done uh, an article, we have written an article and we have done a video on it of Surah Duha. I request the co-host to keep it ready. And at the end of the session, please put it. Or you can go to Curious Ads and you can find out uh, what is the, you know, how, what is that, you know, about suicide, right? How do you avoid suicidal thoughts? Now, how do you come out of depression? What is the uh, Quranic remedy for that? Something like that. The title will be something around like that. And this is exactly the same cognitive triangle or cognitive behavioral therapy. 
CBT, as they call it in short form, is used by the Quran 1,400 years ago. And this is the you know, latest, um, what do you call, a technology or the technique that they use, latest technique that the psychologists and psychiatrists use today. And the Quran, Allah he revealed it 1,400 years ago. So I wanted to go and read it because it's extremely uh, beneficial on, uh, on several fronts, especially in the month of the Quran. It's extremely important that you understand that. So please do that. So what is this cognitive triangle? The cognitive triangle, is, it's like a ripple effect. One starts, it, it's followed by the another, then it is followed by the another, right? It goes in succession. What is the first thing? Anything will have to start as a thought. You think about it. That's the first step, right? Now, right now I'm talking, you're all thinking, right? Now, if the thought remains as a thought, it's of no use. The thought should be deep enough, deep enough that it leads to a lot of feeling. Now, now you know where they feel the Quran title is coming from, right? The thought should be deep enough that it gives rise to a feeling. I get a feeling, right? There are a lot of feelings, happiness, sadness, you know, joy, uh, right? Anger, whatever, you know, all the emotions, right? Feeling, right? It, it leads to a feeling. And when the feeling is deep enough, it will lead to action, right? So it starts as a thought. The thought is deep enough. It's like this, right? Cascading effect, right? It will fall, the card falls, and the next card will fall, right? That the thought should be strong enough, deep enough that it falls and it triggers a feeling. And the feeling should be deep enough and strong enough that it triggers an action. This is it. And this is exactly what they use. Right? This is exactly somebody is in a very pessimistic, right? They have a lot of suicidal thoughts. What do they do? They do the same thing. They change the thought process. They ensure that the, the, the change in thought process, it gives a feeling and it will change the action. This is exactly what they do. So it's a proven uh, technique that is used in uh, psychology and psychiatry. Alhamdulillah, I am not bringing this here because it is a proven technique in psychology or psychiatry. I am bringing this because this is exactly what Allah Rabbul Alameen uses in Surah Doha. And you go and read it and read the article and watch the video, you will get what I am saying. Okay. Now, let me give a practical demo. Okay. Look at this baby. Huh? Look at this baby. Right. I want you to focus. Right. If you are distracted, then this exercise will not work. Look at this baby. Right. Take a good look. Now, let's see. You had a look at the baby. You would have had a thought, you would have had a feeling, and there might be an action. So can you tell me what thought you had when you saw the picture of that baby? What thought you had? It is happy. What a lovely baby. Okay. Right? The thought is, the baby is cute. Right? It's a cute baby, right? That's a thought. Now, this thought, it would have given you a feeling. What feeling did it give? Want to hug it or cuddle it or take it in the lap? Happiness. Oh, sorry, somebody said that. Happiness. Happiness, right? Happiness is a feeling, right? You felt happy, right? This happiness feeling would have given rise to an action. And I will ask it as a question. How many of you smiled when you looked at the baby's picture? Did anybody smile? Yes. yes. Right? Yes. Yes, right. You have smiled, smile, right? Why? Where is that smile coming from? It is coming from this feeling of happiness, right? And where is that feeling of happiness coming from? It is coming from the thought that the baby is cute. Now, I want you to focus here. This is a very, very important thing. Now, let's say you are distracted. You are attending this session, but like you are on WhatsApp or, you know, you are watching a TV or, you know, somebody is talking to you, you are talking to them and you did not see the picture, the baby's picture properly. Would you think you would have the same thought? Yes or no? Would you, if you are distracted? No, 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 no. no right? Yes, if you did not have a, you know, a deep enough thought, do you think you would have felt happy? No. Yes or no? No, right? No. Okay. No. So if you did not feel happy, you did not have that feeling, do you think you would have smiled? No. No. Ah, you see that, right? So one of the main important things is, be it the Quran, be it anything, you should not be distracted. Right, you're talking to somebody, you're on WhatsApp, right, you know, you're lying on the couch, you know, this is not good enough. Not, not good enough for anything, definitely not good enough for the Quran. Quran requires your undivided attention and we'll come to that, right, and how we treat the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us, amin ar alameen, right. So this is a very simple exercise. So I have to drive actions, right, because that's what I want. I want change. So how do we drive actions? I need thoughts that evoke feelings. And I need feelings that lead me into actions. And remember, strong feelings lead to firm actions. The stronger the feeling, the stronger the action. 
for example in the uh, session on ramadan how you know, what if it's your last ramadan in that session we in depth in detail we spoke about love for allah subhanahu wa taala the stronger my love for allah subhanahu wa taala is the stronger and the firm my actions will be right the sacrifices will be at a different level the priorities will be at a different level why because my feeling for allah subhanahu wa taala is very strong the love is very strong okay but how do i get this strong feeling i cannot go to the market and say i want 1 kilo of strong feeling right it will not work like that i need to build powerful thoughts powerful thoughts not in you know, a like in a superficial powerful thoughts deep thoughts i have to understand how to cultivate this habit of generating this powerful thoughts this is this is the key my dear brothers and sisters if you can get this right it is a practice obviously you know just because i'm telling you you will not get it you have to practice it it's a skill alhamdulillah if you try inshallah everybody here will get it right no problem at all it's not rocket science but it's not easy you have to practice and you have to practice consistently so you have to cultivate this habit of getting into this powerful thoughts and naturally right you not make any effort right nobody told you that you have to feel happy when you saw the baby nobody came and told you you have to smile it's all spontaneous very natural when you saw the baby there was a thought that it is cute you started you know feeling happy and you eventually you smiled immediately right no problem at all same thing here if you can cultivate the habit of generating this powerful thoughts it will automatically spontaneously it will generate strong feelings and those strong feelings will spontaneously it will lead to firm actions simple okay so far with me make sense make sense yes yes okay right before we go into how do we cultivate this powerful thought we must know our place our place in this wonderful universe right and i i might have played this video before and inshallah i am going to play it today as long as i am alive wherever there is an opportunity i'll play this video and this is a video that i would personally recommend if somebody is very serious download it and keep on seeing it over and over and i will tell you why Let, now let's watch the video imagine this is you okay now you see the person here but imagine this is you yes, you are in a park right now this is a junction road junction right now it's a town right you zoom out zoom out zoom out now this is a city right you zoom out zoom out zoom out now this is your country you zoom out zoom out zoom out this is your continent asia you zoom out zoom out zoom out this is planet earth right you zoom out zoom out zoom out now you will see the moon right the lunar orbit the moon is going around the earth great right now you are seeing the near earth asteroids you now you are seeing the other planets right the inner planets right then you are getting to the outer planets the bigger ones yes right now you are coming out right you know no the all the other now you are coming to the sun okay great ah uh, now you are slowly transitioning into the milky way galaxy not yet we are still in the sun right now we are going to start with the milky way galaxy right local bubble you know where is the milky way galaxy it is still not there spiral lamps ah uh, finally it is coming ah now you got it okay milky way finally we arrived mashallah okay milky way is coming now we have the other galaxies we are coming now you see right milky way galaxy has become very small now now these are cluster of local galaxies now it is going there are different clusters now we are going 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 now this is the universe can anybody tell me where milky way galaxy is here in this any ideas no no okay mashallah no. right we cannot we cannot so there are billions and billions of galaxies and by the way this is the observable universe huh? and the astrophysicists they say that the observable universe is only 5% the remaining they don't know why because it's all dark matter it's completely dark they have no clue what is there so only allah alone knows you know how big the universe is now let's go back right go back and see where we end right we are going back now right now you see right backwards local galaxy group right then we will now we enter into milky way now we are going back right and we will enter into the solar system right here to moon we are coming and you think okay we are coming 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 ah uh, wonderful now we are coming we have ended up here okay okay what is the point of all this i want to ask you a very simple question how significant do you think you are in this universe you saw the universe right how significant you are it's a question please. very very insignificant very very insignificant very very means how many very very 
little i mean i mean come on when uh, we considering the size of the universe and i look who i am huh? look you know you know who i am look look yourself in the mirror huh? look yourself in the mirror but look but i mean you see right the milky way galaxy is insignificant we cannot even locate the milky way galaxy the solar system cannot be located within the milky way right and imagine you know in in front of the sun uh, this is like i don't know like a small ball not even like a golf ball even less than like a marble basically right the earth is like a marble or even lesser than that in front of the sun in the earth there is a continent in the continent there is a country in the country there is a state there is a district there is a town and there is a locality in that locality or a particular place and you are there this is where we are but the attitude that we have does it reflect that honestly the way we speak the way we think we speak and think as if the entire world is under our feet am i not am i wrong how is our thinking do we have any humility at all the way we speak to our brothers fellow brothers the way we interact with them is there any humility does this realization does it humble you and when you stand in the sala who are you standing in front of not just the one who created this big universe this universe is nothing in front of the kursi and what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say in front of the kursi the universe the entire universe is like an iron ring you know the ring that you put in your finger right it's a huge desert you throw an iron ring imagine you know what is the size and if i throw an iron ring and i ask you to find out can you find out the iron ring for me that's it right you can spend hundreds of years you may not be able to find the iron ring because the desert is vast where on earth will you go and find a small ring this is the size of the universe and the kursi oh now you might be wondering that's why Allah, when you said ayat al kursi right this realization should come was a kursi who samawati wal ard it can take all the heavens and the earth the entire universe inside it subhanallah allah says that okay oh man this is a massive kursi ha huh? keep dreaming we move to arsh the kursi in front of the arsh is like the small iron ring thrown in the desert and rabbul alamin is the king of the arsh dul arsh al majid and when we stand in sala i want you to think right this grand universe then we have the kursi then we have the arsh then we have the creator the king of the kings and here we are standing in front of him honestly do we have that humility seriously at least the body language does it show humility the problem is we think too much of ourselves you know who i am eh? you know who i am main kon malum i'll tell you who we are the moment we die will anybody say mr jilani khan is here what will they say right he she will become it right and they're taking right they will not say jilani khan is coming they will say janaza janaza rehba right when they leave the sala they will say um, uh, mr jilani khan is here let's pray for him no they will say mayit mail this is how they announce right i mean correct how do they announce do they announce you know this is so and so person he is a doctor double phd uh, allama nothing mayit correct or not brothers sisters i mean correct or no you right right yes that's it the moment you die you see right? your tag itself completely changes all the doctor all the suffix uh, prefix you have right Uh, right doctor that this you know professor uh, everything all the labels everything gone mayit but the way we act the attitude we have subhanallah why am i telling you this this is the biggest hurdle in understanding the quran in implementing the quran because there is no humility if you don't approach the quran with the, if you don't approach the quran without humility right sorry if you don't approach the quran with humility right or if you, you should approach the quran with humility then you will you will see there will be changes but if you don't approach right you approach thinking too much of yourself you thinking that you know who you know who i am right although you may not say it but the attitude says that right the way you stand in sala as if you know you are doing a favor huh? when you give sadaka as if you are doing a favor right you see right first of all we should come to the realization that i'm so insignificant not very 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 there is no word to express it 
completely insignificant that to whatever degree to the infinite degree i am insignificant i am nothing in the grand in the scheme of grand universe i am nothing is the first realization and whenever allah subhanahu wa taala repeats several times in the quran that he created the heavens and the earth have you ever thought stopped and thought and why why is allah repeating it so much i mean everybody knows right who is that to know uh, who doesn't know that allah created the heavens and the earth once if you say we will understand but he repeats in several places why you have to get that realization who am i who am i in front of this rubble all i mean i am nothing not even a speck there are 800 800 crore people living in this world what will in a change if i die nothing absolutely nothing life will continue for others things will go on i'm just nobody right i'm not even a footnote in the history the attitude la hola wala ko tella bella do you have that humility when you stand in sala when you praise allah subhanahu wa taala when you ask allah subhanahu wa taala do you put yourself down this is a question if that is not there my dear brothers and sisters this is extremely important you have to fix this if you don't fix this you can listen to you know tons of lectures and you can be half is a quran you might know you know usul tafsir left right and center right you know arabic language you know imam zamakshari would be a student to you all that is great nothing will change nothing will change an in 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 ignorant uh, rather an illiterate guy who doesn't know anything he will you know you know he will be allah's wali but a person with so much of knowledge right he will be one of the worst people that right? be his akhlaq be his attitude be his... nothing right you will not see anything in it but you know there will be a lot of information in his head so the very first thing is you approach the book of allah subhanahu wa taala you approach you approach allah's kalam you approach allah's speech with this humility with the realization with the acknowledgement that i am completely insignificant i am nothing when i say nothing literally nothing you know you want to plot it in an excel sheet right where you stand in the universe you know 0.0000000 you keep on putting it right with the, with the thing i mean it will go on i don't know for how many pages it will go basically in mathematics that is zero so is, we are nothing this is extremely important and you approach from no onwards till we die inshallah right this will keep forgetting that's why i told you right you have to download this video and keep it right to remind yourself by the way i'll just make one point and i'll move to the next slide when you start the sala you recite something called as wajhatu uh, right inni wajhatu wajhi lilladhi right wajhatu recite right does anybody know yes sir brother okay do you know it's a quran ayat yes brother okay so who recited the ayat ibrahim alayhi salam ibrahim alayhi salam right okay what does the diet say i have turned my face to the face of the person who created the heavens and the earth i so turn tell... my face towards the yes. creator of the universe yes right so the whole point is the creator of the heavens and the earth right universe so when you recite this and there is no realization how do you expect humility you see the action right you want action you want to be humble in the prayer you want to have khushu so the problem is there is no realization there is no thought process the mouth is reciting in ni wajah tu wajah ni ni patras okay mouth is recite where is the thought process that recitation of mine is not invoking any deep thoughts because there are lack of deep thoughts there is no feeling because there is no feeling there is no action i'm just standing there i don't know like whatever the moment you recite it properly and it, you know you just bring that grand universe and you see that oh i'm nothing and here i am standing in front of my rabb and whatever i am saying he is answering he is going to answer alhamdulillah rabbil alamin he is answering imagine that you see that very thought itself it brings me a lot of feelings and you know just that feeling itself you know you see right unknowingly my body will bend you and you see you see some people right you try it and you know you take a camera and you see it right you can do it you can try this as an experiment and you, know, you see like how you smiled right spontaneously you you know your body will bend your head will bow now this is my dear brother said this is change right there is no uh, secret recipe here right you know you know you need not watch 100 lectures it's just one thing realization and internalizing it and putting it into practice this requires practice just because i'm saying you no know, you know you go to asar maybe in asar sala you might try but in maghrib you might try and the day, day after tomorrow you might forget so this requires a lot of practice repeatedly conscious effort i am going to recite recite wajah to properly even if it takes 2 minutes time it's okay i will think about it right then only i have to move to do this 
your salah will be at a different quality and i'm just getting started i'm not even coming to the quran just in salah right one simple thing and you started you see the difference with this right remember this now this is the attitude we have right now we will be judge of you know how, how much we think about ourselves now let me ask you this what do your eyes mean to you for example close your eyes and imagine a day without your eyes close your eyes you know please uh, you know do what i'm saying close your eyes and think if you don't have eyes for one day you don't have eyesight when i say eyes i mean eyesight i mean imagine how how difficult life would be how difficult okay now you can open your eyes now i call this as a light off experiment next time when the power goes off at night don't immediately turn on your mobile torch don't look for a candle try to spend 2 or 3 minutes in the darkness try this these are all very important try to find 2 or 3 minutes in the darkness and you will see how difficult it is right you will not know where where is what right you will stumble upon you know you will hit your leg your hand into something you will drop something now imagine what about the blind person for 2 to 3 minutes we are finding it so difficult how is life for a blind person how is life for a blind person is it easy it's brothers and sisters very difficult very, very difficult. difficult right challenging very challenging right now it's easy to say right but when you do this exercise you know that realization dawns on you you'll be like oh my god you see the thought process right it gives you that feeling subhanallah right that feeling right and you see look at the eye side i'm able to see what is that what what words come alhamdulillah you see now when you do this exercise you will understand what eyes mean to you and you know that a single day without the eyesight will be challenging will be very difficult and imagine not having eyesight for a lifetime gone you cannot even imagine the very thought itself will give you uh, sadness you will be in worry you will start doing dua ya allah alhamdulillah ya allah preso my eyesight right you will do all that right great now look at this what does the quran mean to you let's do the same exercise imagine a day without the quran right when i said we said it will be challenging it will be difficult you know what all okay, mashallah what about the day without the quran there is no quran what will change in your life if there is no quran honestly right we need not answer it aloud ask let's ask ourselves for many of us nothing will change for many of us nothing when i say nothing absolutely nothing whatever you did yesterday will continue today also so the quran is there or not there it doesn't make any difference you see but i said you saw right one day not even one day three minutes you see oh pa so difficult huh the, 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 the very thought of the, uh, the very thought of us losing the eyesight it makes us feel sad it makes us feel worried right but with the quran but with the quran whether it is there or not there right it doesn't make a difference for many of us so the question is what does the quran mean to you this is extremely important right what does the quran mean to you because it's not if it is not making any difference right its presence or absence is not having an impact on your life when i say life it is everything your thought process your priorities your attitude your behavior hmm there's no change you are same you are short tempered today also you are short tempered you are jealous today also you are jealous you are stingy today also you are stingy nothing no change so question is what does the quran mean to you you see when the eyesight right imagine eyesight yes it is important but if you lose eyesight is it end of the world is it is it end of the world that's it eyesight gone that's it you know the, uh, human beings cannot live they should all go die is it something like that no 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 in fact there are so many scholars who are blind they are still blind they are still living scholars who are blind and there were in the past who were blind amazing scholars subhanallah not only memorized the quran they memorized sahih bukhari they even memorized fathul bari the sharah the explanation of sahih bukhari yes right so there are scholars like that unbelievable people with eyes they cannot do but you know they are blind born blind they never had eyesight or they lost eyesight at a very young age like 2 or 3 years old they went on to achieve so many things today even today they are respected they are revered people are learning from the wisdom that they left behind right but it's a handicap but it's not like in it, the end of the world but what about the quran 
you lose the quran you lose everything i lose everything gone what am i without the quran think about it ar rahman allama al quran khalaq al insan allah rabbul alamin mentions teaching of the quran before creation of the man because without the quran i mean there is no purpose to our creation right how do we understand the creation but do i see quran like that if i am not right the, the, the importance and significance i give to my eyesight even at least 50% of it at least 25% of it if i am not giving to the quran i want to ask you and i will ask myself honestly how do i expect to change in my life you see the problem it's a fundamental problem so what is actually the quran when people ask right people will give lot of answers so oh, it's a guidance that this this right i'm going to give a completely different answer from the quran only right for you know guidance everything mashallah furqan guidance everything right keep it aside yeah mashallah correct answers keep it but i want you to you know look at this ayat and i want you to change the way you look at the quran next time you open the quran this is how inshallah you start looking at it look at this ayat allah invites wallahu yad'u ila daris salam right allah invites to the home of peace i want you to think whom is he inviting brothers whom is he inviting firaun haman karun ibrahim alaihi salam whom is he inviting me mankind yes. ah don't say mankind me yes. he is inviting me what an invitation given to you directly by your rab now this is very easy to read right go back to that universe what is your significance in the universe what is my significance in the universe and who is inviting me i mean i want to give this right if a world famous celebrity invites you how will you respond some celebrity whom you love how will you respond you'll go and you'll tell everybody right oh you know personal invite the person you know he sent me a whatsapp message brother bro please come sis sisty huh dude please join personal invite and you know, you go everybody personally invited he said please do rsvp why because celebrity who is inviting us here and who are who, who are we in this universe not even a speck and allah rabbul alamin invites and is that how we see the quran i mean you get an invitation like this i mean i, I, I mean i am at a loss of words for life you know how would you how should we see it and how are we seeing this let me tell you how we respond how do we respond to the quran right i will tell you now you you will find out and i will find out what i am doing with this okay what i am going to do is i am going to show you a picture okay and i will show you that picture only for 5 seconds ha huh? don't be distracted if you are distracted please exit the zoom you know you watch the recording but this is you know you have to be in this you know follow all the exercises there will be a lot of exercises right please cooperate only then inshallah you know there will be some benefit that you can take from this session inshallah i'm going to show you a picture i'll give you only 5 seconds for you to look at the picture and you have to note make a note of how many things you observed in the picture there are several things in the picture you have to quickly make a note of i'll give you only 5 seconds ready ready for this exercise everybody yes inshallah inshallah okay and everybody please participate huh? okay only 5 seconds get ready okay this is the picture 1 2 3 4 5 okay tell me what all did you observe go ahead traveler carrying a tent or bird mountain bird mountain okay i want somebody to keep a count okay number one bird number two mountain what else man huh? with backpack man with backpack number 3 okay backpack also i'll put it as number 4 ha huh. on his back on the back uh, birds birds 6 okay 7 ha moon moon 8 ha Hills. Cat. Cat. Okay, cat has already mentioned. Eight. A house. A house. A house. Okay, nine. This old age. Ten. A ten. 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 Okay, ten. Huh? What else? Stick with the man. No, it, it stick. Okay, very good. What else? Good old observation. Old age with the cat and all. Cat. Okay. Bags. Already and mentioned. Sing. Okay. Now oh, you give me like around ten items, right? Now let's go back. Okay. Uh, let's go back and let's uh, do this. Right now, let's start counting. Tent number one. 
you see the plant number two okay then you see the man standing number three you see the hat number four you see the cat number five and the cat is sitting on a small pillow okay number six you see a backpack number seven you see a water bottle number eight okay you see a stick number nine okay then you see a house number 10 you see a moon number 11 you see birds number 12 you see clouds number 13 you see stars number 14 you see another tree here right i can go on and on and on you go to all the details now you might be wondering you know this guy has gone completely nuts he said you know you'll say feel the quran and this idiot is talking something about the picture no my dear brothers and sisters you're talking about the quran only i'll tell you now for a simple picture like this i gave you five seconds and with collective group you could not cross more than 10 and if you give you individually I'm, i can challenge that it will not go more than six what is the difference what was the difference in the first thing and the second time you saw the picture what was the difference there was only one difference what was it Time. Time. Time, time right the more time you were able to look at the picture the more you were able to get this is a simple picture huh? this is a very simple picture there is nothing complicated about it what about the quran how much can you grasp if you spend a few seconds on an ayat for a picture we have to spend at least 45 seconds, one minute to understand what are all the elements, right? No, no explanation, nothing. Just to see and tell me what is there. And this is Allah's kalam and you want to read it once and you want to understand. You want to get feelings. You want to change in your life. Please, wake up and smell the coffee, my dear brothers and sisters. Whom are we kidding? Look how we are treating the Quran. How much time do we spend on an ayat? You tell me, how much time do you spend thinking about a verse? And if you don't spend time, what on earth will you get? For picture itself, you are not able to grasp what is there. You will, you will be able to grasp Allah's kalam. You think Allah's kalam is so, you know, cheap that, you know, you, you, know, you just treat it like that. You know, Allah will open up the wisdom and you will get, you know, unlock everything and you, know, you will get it. No. You see the fundamental problem? So what is making us rush through it? Number one, we think too much of ourselves. We feel entitled. That's, I mean, it's indirect arrogance. If you have the humility and you see that Quran is this an invitation, personal invitation from the Rabbul Alameen for this to me, who is completely insignificant, who is infinitely insignificant, who is nothing. Will I have the guts? Will I have the audacity to gloss over the ayat of the Quran like that? You see, my brothers and sisters, where the problem is? Past is past. From today, things should change. When I open the Quran, I open with humility. I tell myself, I'm nothing. But yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of His love for me, out of His mercy, He has invited me. And this Quran is the invitation. And Quran is the invitation, right? How else Allah spoke? Quran is the invitation. Right? If I get into this mindset and I remember that even for a, some stupid dumb picture that was created using AI, I had to spend time to understand the different elements or rather to observe the different elements in it. Without giving time, how will I understand the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You are in a hurry, please. Forget it. Bhakti nahi hai bhai. Chhod do bhai. You know, this is not for you. Apa kadar mein nahi likha hai, right? You are gone. Do whatever you want. You are serious about this. You have to give time. And give time for one ayat. I am not even talking about, you know, read, you know, surah bakara, nothing. And this, by the way, this is exactly what the sahaba did. You already know this. Abdullah ibn Umar al what did he say? We will not move to the next ayat until we understood that ayat and pondered over it and then practice it. Then we go to the next ayat. And you know how long it took for him to memorize Surah Bakara? Do you think he had a poor memory power? Subhanallah, you know whom you are talking about? We are talking about one of the, uh, the faqi among the Sahaba, one of the scholars from the Sahaba, Abdullah ibn Umar, the mountain of knowledge. It took 10 years. In another narration, it took, I think, you know, 15 years, I think, 7 years. In one narration, 10 years to memorize Surah Bakara. And he gave a feast after memorizing Surah Bakara. 
look at our attitude right in the month of this month of blessed month of ramadan time for change we are going to change we will change right inshallah you want to change right inshallah 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 right okay so for us to change we must understand how we are interacting with the quran there are three levels of interaction my dear brothers and sisters please remember this one is physical interaction the interaction is at the physical level you interact with the quran using your limbs eyes and tongue can you tell me how do you interact uh, using your limbs eyes and tongue recitation okay. recitation reading it right looking at it right picking it up right all these are physical interaction there is one more level which is intellectual interaction where you apply your mind right you start thinking about it you start discussing right you start reflecting yeah you look for information right this is all intellectual and there is one more interaction which is spiritual interaction where your heart is involved right and i want you to look at it if you look at the muslims today they will be either in one of these three levels of interaction very few people will have all these three they will have physical interaction they will have internal interaction intellectual interaction they will have spiritual interaction very very few majority of them are in physical interaction they did not they did not even move to the intellectual interaction just physical interaction just to recite 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 memorize 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 that's it i will give a simple example husband and wife their relationship is only on the physical interaction level what would you call that relationship would you call that relationship like uh, mashallah an, an ideal couple right you have a couple and their relationship is only at the physical level that's it there is no intellectual here in a, for a, a marriage there is no spiritual there is emotional right there is no emotional bonding nothing there is no intellectual bonding nothing it's only at the physical level you know what will you call this marriage as what will you give a label <laughs> what, what label will you give to this marriage i mean would you wouldn't you think i mean why are these people married <laughs> right i mean seriously right why, why would you even marry to, i mean to be at this level right you don't need to be married to that guy or to that lady this is stupid right the first thing is you just get out right this is not marriage this is a torture right you don't even have an intellectual bonding you don't even have an emotional bonding i mean what kind of stupid marriage is this is not marriage this is mockery two people living in the same house right you see right you get the feeling right same thing applied to the quran if somebody says my interaction with the quran is only at the physical level it's so pathetic right miskin you know we have to feel bad for these people you know we have to pity them and if it is our case we have to pity ourselves right look at this but that is what majority of the people in the ummah that's what they do only physical interaction and they have no worries about it they are so happy content that you know i'm only physical right it's like you know, you know the people in the marriage you know celebrating that you know uh, how, how imagine you know, the guy comes and announces right you know my interaction with my wife is only at the physical level i neither have emotional bonding nor have intellectual bonding you'll think you know this guy is gone nuts this guy must go to the mental hospital right he must see a psychiatrist which idiot will celebrate it but today that's what we do right as an umma people will memorize the entire quran but they will not understand a single ayat you recite they, you are reciting right you memorized it what have you recited no i don't know what is allah saying i don't know and we are very proud and we are celebrating also oh my son memorized the quran my daughter memorized the quran my son is memorizing the quran my daughter is memorizing the quran what do they understand nothing look 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 how dumb we are honestly the whole wala ko the level i mean with this kinds of attitude how on earth will there be any change there will be no change so what are we supposed to do we have to move our levels of interaction right if it is just physical move to intellectual if we are already engaging in intellectual interaction move to spiritual and we will see how we are going to do it so obviously it's given that you know alhamdulillah at least the people who are attending the sessions here they will alhamdulillah i hope inshallah right you know you are all doing Uh, alhamdulillah you are doing intellectual interaction where basically you are using your mind right so when you are using your mind and start thinking it will actually generate thoughts right you read any ayat for that matter we said zul sura zalzala right we gave us and gave it as an exercise i'm sure right it, it gave you a lot of thoughts so if you work on that thoughts right and keep on thinking and you know keep thinking at a very deep level it will actually elevate you to a spiritual interaction where you will start having feelings and feelings are, are to do with the heart right that's what azal zala right and you will have fear you will have worry uh, right you know you will you know you will have regret you will have a lot of that or you might feel happy depending on who you are right all this will come so these are feelings and these feelings will actually lead you into actions look at this right it's again the same thing 
right? They are also physical interaction. But here, look at the change here. It's not physical interaction here. It becomes physical outcome. You see the difference? There it was just physical interaction. It started there, ended there. Here, it comes, 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 and it, you know, it is manifesting itself as a physical action. Right? That regret, that fear, that hope, right? All the feelings that you have. Right when your heart is involved, when it becomes you know when there's a spiritual interaction, it actually leads you to action. Is this clear so far? So far with me? Yes, brother. Yes, yes okay. Right. Uh, now this is all gyan. Now we have to come to the practical, right? Brother, this is all great. How do we do this? Now we're we'll get into it. I'm going to give you four techniques today, or four tools. Four. There are several. Today, inshallah, we'll discuss only four. And inshallah, throughout the month of Ramadan and beyond that, you have to keep on practicing. It is skill. Right? Knowledge is not sufficient. You have to practice. Right? If I ask you how do you to drive a car, everybody will tell me. Right? You have to use the steering, act, clutch, accelerator. This is all theory. But if I ask you to put, you know, you do not know driving, but theoretically you are strong. Now I give you a car and I say drive on the road, you cannot. You need to practice. So this is only knowledge. Right? I'm going to teach you the techniques and tools which you have to use. Practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, at one point it will become natural. Right? You don't need to struggle. Right? You stand in the sala, automatic. Tataburu will happen in Salah. Spiritual interaction will happen in Salah, right? You don't need to go and sit in you know, nothing. You recite automatically, right? You know, every feeling, everything will happen. Alhamdulillah, you will see the results in your know, daily life. You come out of Salah, you will, definitely you will see that effect, Alhamdulillah. So this is what it is. So let's look at the first thing. Okay, this is when you, know, you have to open your uh, uh, translation and I request the volunteer who volunteered to recite, right? Uh, please be ready. The first tool is you and Allah. Right? You and Allah. Okay, when I say you and Allah, basically, you know, if you want to put it, Allah and I. Okay, Allah and I, right? Okay, look at this ayat. Okay, look at this ayat. And remember the man of the veil. I'm not going to use Arabic because we're going to do it in English. Whatever translation you have, doesn't matter. Good, bad, nothing. Take any translation you want. Inshallah, I will tell you that we can use this only with translation. You need not even know to, you need not even know to read Arabic. Okay, and remember the man of the veil. Who, 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 who is the ayat talking about? Who is the man of the veil? Yunus Ah, Yunus <laughs> right. When he went off angrily, thinking we could not restrict him, but then he called out in the deep darkness, there is none worthy of worship but you. Glory be to you. Surely I was from the wrong doers, so we answered his prayer and rescued him from distress. And this is how we rescue the believers. Okay. We have read it. Now, I want to ask you, stop there. Allah Rabbul Alameen said, okay, Yunus alayhi salam asked the dua. We answered his prayer, rescued him from distress. Right? Look at the conclusion in the next ayat. This is how we rescue the believers. All right? Hmm. So, what is the learning for you? Do you understand anything from this? We know that ayat very well. We know that. Right? We know that dua ayat. Now, what is the learning here? Can anybody tell me? Why would Allah end like this? There's a message for you and me. What is the message? There's no message, huh? This this situation is not just with Yunus al Islam, it is applicable to believers and this and the uh, outcome as well and how it went through is also applicable to others. How Allah Ta'ala rescued. So Allah will save you also if you do dua to him. He made a mistake, right? Yunus al Islam. He made one mistake, but we may keep on making mistakes. That's the difference. But Allah says this is how we rescue the believers. Believers. Common. Right? If you're a believer, Alhamdulillah, you know, Allah will rescue me. Alhamdulillah, I have to be a believer. That's it. Ashadan la ilaha illallah, Ashadan Muhammad Rasulullah, I'm there. Done. Allah is going to rescue me. What I have to do? What did Yunus alayhi salam do? He called out. He did dua. I call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do dua. Allah will rescue me. Allah will save me. Simple. Now look at this dua. There is none worthy of worship but you. Glory be to you. Surely I was from the wrongdoers. See, the kalima, it is not la ilaha illallah. It is saying la ilaha illa ant. You. I want you to, this is the whole point, right? You and Allah, right? And you are talking. How are you talking? You are talking to Allah and you are addressing him as you. You. The power of you. We need to understand the power of you. I'll give a simple, very lame example. You know, in a WhatsApp message, you send, how are you? Right? You are directly communicating with the other person. Yes or no? WhatsApp, you are sending, how are you? Right? 
are you directly communicating with the other person yes 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 now that person need not be in the same place this is, you know it's not a physical thing this is what i want you to understand right because that's why i'm giving this whatsapp example because if i directly explain some people will think brother are you trying to tell that you know, allah is right in front of us physically you see right i want you to i don't want you to think like that that's why i'm giving the whatsapp example the whatsapp guy you know the other person the recipient he might be sitting in us but you are still saying how are you so it's nothing to do with physical it is about communication so it's a direct communication right so whenever you are using the second person you know right first person uh, second person third person first person is i second person is you third person is him he they right these are all third person right you know the basic grammar okay right i'm using second person whenever i use a second person it is for a direct communication with the other person right if the person is not i'm not communicating with him directly i cannot use the term how are you right i have to ask how is he or how are they correct right i have to use a third person if, if they are not there right but only when i am communicating directly i have to use you this is very important now look at the dua la ilaha illa ant there is absolutely none worthy of worship except you right subhanak you are pure it's a direct communication with allah subhanahu wa taala and by the way this is not only this dua any dua that you recite is a direct communication take rabbana atina rabbana our rabb whom will you call will you call someone you know whom you can you know reach out to, to whom you can communicate directly or who is not there if somebody is not there in the room right you, you know that they are not there at all in the house will you keep calling them will you keep shouting let's say zaid mm. zaid zaid you know that zaid is there in the room then you will shout ah zaid right so that he can hear you so when you say rabbana you know that he is there it's a direct communication atina you give us that's what it is right we say give us what is what is give us you give us actually in arabic you will literally translate it it is you give us but in english we don't write you give us it's understood so they don't write it but in arabic literal translation you give us you give us right right you any dua i take any dua every dua is like that only direct communication look at the last 10 days we recite one dua what is that allahumma please help me Allahumma please brothers and sisters come on Allahumma inna ka'fun Allahumma inna ka'fun Allahumma yes right Allahumma inna ka surely you afuwan tuhibbul you law direct communication now why is this important see it creates a bond right when you directly ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i want you to who are we how significant we are we we are very significant right in the universe ha huh? you know who i am you know my degree dude we are nothing and this nothing is calling out to whom the all powerful the almighty the king of kings you see direct communication and he says that call me directly brother if this such a basic thing if our muslims have understood do you think they'll go and sit in the darga simple you, know, you don't need any darshan class of tauhid and all that you don't need to read kitab ut tauhid basic thing if you understand this in the dua it is direct right there is no intermediary does allah say no ask through this no direct you see and this is an honor a privilege for a nothing like me to directly communicate with the rabbul alamin one who has everything this nothing is communicating with the one who has everything imagine that and the one who has everything is responding to this nothing subhanallah what a humbling experience my dear brothers and sisters allah akbar subhanallah right so this is number one right the power of you so whenever you do dua write this down dua pay attention i'm directly communicating with allah subhanahu wa taala any dua right this is very important number two allah and you what is the difference between that and this you and allah is from here to above right from from the earth to above the heavens beyond the heavens allah and you is from up to down from above the heavens to us and the volunteer are you ready brother please start reading from 7610 uh, brother uh, yes, what is his name ah yeah. uh, yeah abdul wajib right brother yeah abdul wajib ah uh, yes yeah, brother please 76. in english only ah uh, don't read in arabic okay for the sake okay. of the exercise yeah 10 ayat number 10 Uh, of surah insan ar dahr till 19 go into the at number 
we fear from a not a horribly distressful day hmm. go continue 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 keep continuing so allah will deliver them from the horror of that day and grant them radiance and joy just stop there allah will deliver them it's speaking in third person huh? i want you to keep noting this tayat the all the following verses will keep speaking in third person them 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 they 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 continue next one 12 and reward them for their perseverance with the garden in paradise and garments of silk mm, next there they will be reclining on couches never seeing scorching heat or bitter cold next the garden's shade will be right above them and its fruit will be made very easy to reach next continue continue keep waited. on continuing till 19 yeah they will be waited on with silver vessels and cups of crystal crystalline hmm. silver filled precisely as desired hmm. and they will be given a drink of pure wine flavored with ginger hmm. from a spring there called salsabil hmm. they will be waited on by eternal youths if you saw them you would think they were scattered pearls just hang on they 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 suddenly in the 19 the second part of the ayat if you saw them who is that you here who is that you allah is saying you right if you who is that you us yes me, me. not us sir. me allah is telling me jilani if you saw them and look at this next ayat allah akbar see i want you to i mean see this is beauty not from the literary perspective. I mean, from the spiritual per perspective. You know why? Linguistically speaking, Allah should have said, they, 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 third person, third person, third person. He should have said, when they look around, they will see pleasure and a vast kingdom, right? You know what Allah says? When you look around, He's telling me, you will see pleasure. Right? And look at 21. Can you read 21, brother? Ayat number 21. Yeah. The virtues will be dressed in garments of fine green silk and rich brocade, and adorned with bracelets of silver, and the Lord will give them a purifying drink. Again, third person. It went back to third person. See? This is deliberate, huh? Look at it. Look at the switch in the thing. It's called as iltifat in Arabic. One of the powerful tools in the, in, 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 in the, in the language, in Arabic language, in from Balaga. Extremely powerful. And the lifetime can be spent only on this, doing research. So much of learning. So look at this. Again, it went, right? Look at the next ayat. This is a reward for you. And your effort has been appreciated. It could have been, this is a reward for them. And their effort has been appreciated. Why is Allah using you? Why is he telling this to me? Allah wants me in Jannah. Allah wants me to imagine that I'm in Jannah. He's saying, you, I made Jannah for you. You will see. And we, we do this to our kids, right? If you study well, you will get a good job, right? Why do you say that? Because you want the kid to study well. You want the kid to get a good job. Look at his love. And I want to go back. Who am I in this universe? I'm nothing. Insignificant. Who cares if, I don't, if I'm not alive? Nobody gives a damn. The life will move on. Look at him. He doesn't need anybody. Why does he have to do this to me? He loves me. You see? What is the learning here? Pay attention to all the verses that say you. All the verses. And you will not be able to grasp that if you just read it like this. Right? You know, just read the translation. You will not get it. You have to pay attention. Stop. Conscious exercise. Right? And I give some, some you exercises. When I say you exercise, some ayat, right? Sabbih isma rabbikal ala, right? That's ayat. We know that. Glorify the name of your Rabb. Your Rabb. Whom is Allah talking to here? Whom is Allah talking to? Please, please help me. Cooperate. Me. me, my me. So, when me. Allah says glorify, right? He's asking me. So, what should I do? What should I do? I should glorify. Yes. That is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recited he recited Subhana Rabbi Kalala. There's a hadith. Sai hadith. Today, the Juma they recite, right? They, they don't even give gap to for us to recite Subhana Rabbi Kalala. 
but allah is telling me you glorify man it's to me and do we read it when you read the translation do i read it like that no then whom is allah talking to if i tell you brother give me a cup right you have to respond right look at look at us this nothing look at the attitude and this attitude is because of ignorance not because of arrogance because of ignorance profound ignorance inshallah this you know the, the wheels of ignorance bidni la taala should should you no know, go away from this ramadan next time when you see this i ah, stop allah is telling me something right it is addressing you by literally by your name saying and talking to you in the second person direct communication right that was we calling upon allah dua here allah is look at see i am nothing i am in need i am in all need of this rabul alamin so me crying to him calling him upon directly it's expected but he is the king of kings right he doesn't you can say you bloody slave do this glorify me all slaves glorify me he doesn't talk like that see that look at it allah akbar he's saying you know, direct communication subhanallah look at this next in the same surah but you prefer the worldly life he's telling me i have to stop here right Allah is directly telling me, "You prefer, and I have to stop." Now, am I am I preferring? Yes, I am. I'm not doing any sacrifice. Nothing changes, right? I'm living the same way, same damn life that I lived before Ramadan. The same thing continues. Some quantity has increased here and there. After Ramadan, again, I'll go back to the same thing, right? Nothing changes. No sacrifice, no priority, no focus, nothing. No behavioral change, nothing. I was short-tempered before. I'm short-tempered now. I was blasting people then. I'm blasting people now. I'm jealous now. I'm jealous then. Jealous now. Stingy, stingy. Nothing has changed. Greed, greed. Selfish, selfish. Right? Look at this. It's talking to me. And look at this next ayat. Right? In Surah Ghasia, has a description of the overwhelming even reached you. It's a question to you. He's asking me. When somebody asks a question, what should you do? I'm asking, brother, how are you doing? What will you do? Answer back. Yes. Answer. Allah is asking, right? basically is expecting an answer and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he said na'am atani yes it has reached me he is expecting an answer but have you ever i mean i mean you need not uh, tell this aloud ask yourself when was the last time you read the ayat like this and you answered you just read it and we move on so, so the question is for whom for the angels huh? who are there with us to me uh, do you think they will answer look at and then you are wondering brother you know how why my life now how will the life change this is the other that is the etiquette that we have to interact with the quran this for this nothing that, that's what i'm saying that the attitude right completely should change Who, nothing here it's an honor that allah is directly talking to me when i say honor like you know i mean uh, i don't know right there's no words right for nothing like me why why should allah did not take me into account look at this arai talavi kadibe bidin have you seen why is he asking this because he want you to see have you seen basically you have to answer no i have not seen or i am going to see or i am seeing or i have seen there must be some answer for god's sake when no arai talavi kadib bidin hazal gana will go that is why the life is not changing right if you had seen right you would have opened your eyes you would have seen who are the people who are like that and probably i am one of them ayyo la hawla wala quwwata illa billah uh, this ayat is you know this surah is about me I don't make efforts to feed the poor people. My salah, Allah Hula Hula Kote Allah. I have no clue what I'm doing. You see, right? Have you seen? Right? I'm seeing. I'm seeing myself now. Forget about others. Now, when you do this, right? There's a thought process, and the thought process would give me a lot of these feelings: guilt, shame, fear, frustration, anger about myself. Why am I like this? This stupid nothing thinks too much of himself. You see, and this feeling will give me to action. At least something, right? At least next time when I get a message, you know, can, can you help in feeding the poor? At least my, my, you know, my nafs will say, "Arey, arey." Yesterday only you read, a, you know, that Surah Maun, uh, transfer on five hundred rupees. You see, action, change. The stronger the feeling, five hundred become five thousand. Then I will go and tell everybody. Stronger the feeling, right? Because I'm motivated now. The drive. So far with me, make sense? Yes, brother. Okay. Now some homework. Uh, homework or should I skip this slide? Do you want homework or no? Because homework in our school only. Check what is this? They are all grown up people, smart. Hmm? Yes, brother. Okay. Let's go. Doubt some. Okay. I don't look at this. Right. Let's look at the sides. 
Surah Ibrahim. Everybody knows this ayat, most of you. Allah has granted you all that you must have. If you try to count Allah's blessing, you. And look at the ending. I mean, Allah, look at this ending. He said, you, you, you. And he should have said, you are highly unjust. You are very ungrateful, right? Look how he ended. He said, man, you know why? Because he has expectations that I'm not from the unjust and I'm not from the ungrateful. SubhanAllah, look at this. Think about it, right? Remember, linguistically speaking, he said, you, you, you. He should have concluded, right? Surely you are unjust and surely you are ungrateful, right? And which is true, at least for me, my case, right? I'm unjust and I'm ungrateful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me and guide me. But look at it. He made it general. He didn't point fingers at me. You know why? Because the expectation is you can change. Think about it. You will change. I want you to change. And connect, right? This is the homework. How will you connect? I want you to think in one day, right? Not too much. In one day, how many duas you have made? And how many Allah has granted? I'll give a simple example. When I say dua, it need not be very explicit. You walk out of the house. Bismillah, tawakal, talallah, right? That's actually a dua. And you come back home safe. Who protected you? Any, any number of things could have happened. Right? Some guy, some guy could have come and, you know, he could have come and hit you. Somebody could have come and picked up a fight. You could have got mugged. Right? Any number of things, you know, bad things could have happened. Right? Alhamdulillah, you went out, you came home safe. You recited the dua, Allah answered it. Simple. Like that in a day count. Now, I told you, right, it's all hard work, right? You know, we have no time. We are, we are very busy. We, are, you know, we have to khatam karna hai by Quran ko. Yeah, kya hai, bakwas exercise. Huh? Huh? This is all stupid. You know, this guy is dumb. And this idiot is saying sit and count and all this, you know. Go, No problem. No, this exercise and all is, you know, it might not make sense. But because it will take time, right? Count in a single day. You count, you will know how much you have asked and how much he has given. Count the blessings in a single day, like I told you, eyesight, right? I mean, let it come, right? 500, 10,000, 20,000. Only then you will realize for all that he is giving me, how am I acting? And this is an exercise, huh? And trust me, if you do this sincerely, will there be any feeling at all? Because this is a thought, right? We are thinking about it and all that. This is a thought process. Right? I told you, thoughts, feelings, action. When you do this sincerely, will there be feelings or no? Yes. Okay. Will the feelings be very superficial or will it be deep? Deep. And consistently, yes. It will be, be deep if you are doing it properly. And if you have deep feelings, invariably it will lead to action. Invariably. It's not magic. It is not rocket science. The Sahaba did not descend from the heaven. They, these are very basics. Huh? And they understood it very clearly. And they did it. They lived a very simple life. They did it. Alhamdulillah, for them, everything was reminding about Allah subhanahu They looked at the heaven, the, the sky, it reminded them of Allah subhanahu ta'ala. They looked at the camel, they reminded them of Allah subhanahu ta'ala. Whatever they did, right? They looked at their children, it was reminded them about Allah subhanahu ta'ala. So they were able to connect, right? This is number two. So what are, what are the first exercise I told you? Who has, let me see who has written it down. You and Allah, okay. Second one. Second one. Allah and, and you. Allah and you. Jazakumullah khair. Now you come to the third one. Look at this. Right? This month, we all want to become people of taqwa, right? We tell ourselves, why? That's why we are fasting. MashaAllah. Look at this. Surah Kamar. Last two ayats. Look at this ayat. Surely the people of taqwa will be among gardens and rivers. Look at the next ayat. In a seat of honor near to the all-powerful king. I'm not even reading the Arabic. Just translation. And the Arabic is even powerful. Words cannot explain. But okay, let's stick to the translation. In the seat of honor, this nothing will be in a seat of honor. With whom? With the all-powerful king. Imagine this nothing sitting there. Think about being among the gardens and rivers and sitting near how can someone read this and just pass like that? How was it? I mean, how was it possible? So when you do this, 
obviously this feeling right this nothing what does this nothing deserve to sit in the it will be given a seat of honor and to be next to the all powerful king and look at this the word huh? king malik the power the authority and he is giving you that honor i mean look at this right there are a lot of feelings and if your feelings are strong subhanallah it will lead to actions taqwa has got a new dimension to me now what does taqwa mean to me people will say for me taqwa means i want to be next to my rabb finished period this nothing wants to be next to the all powerful king that's it that's it that is my motivation that feeling that want that desire it will push me into actions when everybody is sleeping i will wake up when everybody is giving excuses i will do when everybody finds one reason or the other i will find reasons to do something i will find reasons to take up something i will find reasons to forgive i will find reasons to spend you see life changes it's never the same one ayat my dear brothers that's it i'm only one ayat in this entire ramadan you just read this ayat internalize it finish you need not do khatam you need not do anything you need not even read one page keep it only this ayat keep on reminding you see the difference it makes in your life so what is the lesson here put yourself in the verses when i say put yourself i'll give an example look at this ayat and from the people there are those who dedicate their lives to allah's pleasure and allah is very kind to his servant and from the people am i from the people am i from the people or no yes yes, yes right we are all from the people so question is am i from this person allah is speaking about right because there are people like that even today and we have we are seeing already seeing right you know in gaza they are there they have dedicated their lives forget about me dedicating my life i am dedicating at least half an hour time for his for his pleasure i will ask i'll put myself in this words and ask you know yo i mean this guy where on earth half an hour time dena ka mushkil hai yo 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 no time very busy kya itna kaam hai these people are saying you know for allah's pleasure half an hour very difficult so i know that i'm not i'm unfit for this this is a positive thing look at this one hypocrites we already know right know this ayat i prayed fajr am i this person whom allah is talking speaking about how is my how was my fajr today or how was my duhr today how much did i remember allah subhanahu wa taala how did i stand especially fajr after eating when allah tied to suhur full belting uh, huh? you did you did we stand like that how what was the, what was the humility right but imagine that how how the hypocrites would have stood any difference right so this is number 3 put yourself in the verses number 3 right clear so far so far with me yes brother inshallah okay number 4 yes, ask 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 whatever it is ask ghafur rahim allah says you know who will ghafur rahim how can you just read it and go even in translation arey If somebody in you know, Elon Musk is saying i'm very rich right i'm the richest guy in the world and i'm extremely generous i am going to give money to whom our uh, you know is asking me and you are in badly in need what will you do if you are a sane human being you'll go and ask right is <laughs> is pro- publicly it is announcing anybody can come anybody can ask and i will give you i will never say no and you are badly in need common sense is you should go and ask right look at this rabul alam is saying i will forgive we have tons of sins all i am talking like guy like me maybe mashallah you are all very righteous people there might be very less sins maybe in this ayat may not be relevant to you but for a guy like me i am immersed in sins i am badly in right i cannot read this ayat and move on right i immediately should stop and say i'll just an open invitation you know gabur what does it mean i'll for are ask for for you know that is what it means right how can somebody read it and move on to the next ayat you are reading in the sala you know gabur you have to stop there and say ya allah forgive me but no in you know, wal gafur right and the next ayat goes to whom is allah talking to you see the problem same thing with mercy verses of jannah ask for jannah verses of welfare ask for protection 
what is the righteous people asked to be one of them what is about the evil people asked to be protected now now comes a twist here you can ask duas for every ayat in the quran look at this this is this is the biggest takeaway other thing you might know this is what i'm saying this this is a new perspective that inshallah you should take from today you can ask duas for every ayat take kullu allah wahad right that's one ayat kullu allah wahad can you ask a dua for this ayat uh, on the face of it it looks like i mean what has got dua got to do here can anybody tell me what dua can you ask for kullu allah wahad you have to try make me of those who believe in it and practice that absolutely yeah, make me of those who believe in oneness make me of those who understand the oneness make me of those who propagate the oneness see on the top of my head i am able to come up with three duas similarly you give me a challenge you give me any ayat randomly in the quran even if it is an oath i will give you at least three duas any ayat it's a open challenge inshallah any challenge right you give me i'll give a question at the time i'll give you time you ask me any ayat i'll give you three duas without thinking on the top of my mind inshallah so this is very important so you should ask dua for try to ask dua for every ayat so basically if you read 10 verses you should have asked at least five duas why like i told you duas establish a connection with the quran right because you know when you ask dua it increases your focus even in salah you might be distracted here and there ask yourself when were you best focused in salah it will be during the uh, time when you ask dua <laughs> i mean right or not not the memorized dua not the rabbana lam nanfusna no 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 the dua that you ask right ya allah give me money give me health give me that give me this right this kind of dua rabbana lam nanfusna is the template no thinking we have memorized it and we will uh, recite it i'm not talking about that assalamu alaikum yeah. Right. Uh, so, I wanted to see if you could make a dua out of Alif Lam. Yeah, I ask me. I will tell you later. Okay, in the question answer session. Okay, that's a very easy thing, right? Right. Alif Lam. Maybe there are miraculous letters. I'll tell you. Simple answer. Yeah, Allah make me understand the miraculous nature of the Quran. Finished. <laughs> right. Simple. You think about it. You can come. Right. It's not a challenge at all. You know. You just have to connect to the Quran. You know. Allah will open up, and you know, the duas will keep flowing. Inshallah, Taala. So. the dua right when you do dua even in salah that is where you have best focus the more duas you do the more focus you will be make sense yes or no yes, brothers and sisters yes so yes, practice yes, this sir. okay so yes, four sir. tools i started with dua i ended with dua you and allah basically dua direct connection i ended with dua number four is again dua dua right you need not warrant a dua even for kullu allah ask a dua kullu rabbil falak anyways it's a dua only right anything alam dara kaifa it can be a dua right everything can be converted into a dua so make this as a habit again it's practice right and it will increase focus it will establish a connection with the quran ultimately you are establishing a very strong connection with allah subhanahu wa taala okay so what are you going to do you're going to practice what you have learned so what for this you have to dedicate time and you should focus chuma by you know listening and going there and doing whatever you are doing mm, will not cut it so i only taught you four techniques but there are more techniques several other techniques like this right several but i didn't want to overload you right and overwhelm you with everything today so i have only taught you four simple these are not rocket science take a translation you have to just dedicate time and focus and inshallah you will be able to do so you join us for the future sessions little by little we will inshallah discuss all the other techniques okay and look at this ayat sura it's a sajda ayat ayat of sajda right when the verses of the rahman were recited before them they used to fall down in sajda while they were weeping right right they are weeping and they are falling in sajda this is the effect of the quran right and look at the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam subhanallah it's a sahih hadith in abu dawood look at this the sahabi ralilan he says i saw the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam praying and a sound came from his chest like the rumbling of a millstone because of his weeping you know millstone right rumbling he was he was crying so profusely this is the impact of the quran and this is our leader prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam subhanallah when was the last time we, you cried your heart out reciting the quran ask yourself when was the last time cool. right when was the last time if you have cried and how frequently do you cry like that because invariably it will lead you to crying because it ha- it will move hearts that is why allah rabbul alamin mentioned that in the previous ayat right that i showed you in surah maryam allah mentioned that about people good people right the prophets when they when they were recited right they fall into sajda weeping crying subhanallah right so this is something that this is a kind of a yardstick or benchmark right you can use as a, a thing to find out right you know how much the quran is impacting my heart the spiritual connection 
if i am not crying at all right crying is becoming difficult and you know that right i'm not somewhere somewhere right something is wrong right it's not you know somewhere i have to work more that's a scholar some scholars even say you act like crying even if you cannot cry because out of that allah's mercy then allah will open up your heart and you know you will one day you will receive it no scholars say that actually in, in all seriousness okay this is something that's very very important in summary thoughts should evoke feelings right so don't just gloss over and you know superficial reading mm, will not cut it stop ponder think and you know i gave you four techniques use all those four techniques they will evoke strong feelings and those strong feelings will lead you to action so do the you exercise focus when allah mentions you and i give you that homework right what is the homework can anybody tell me surah which surah is that surah ibrahim surah ibrahim ayat number 34 please do that exercise at least spend some 10 minutes to do that exercise please right put yourself in the verses and ask am i this person every there are several ayat where you can ask am i this guy firon okay i may not be firon but do i have this attitude of firon right do i do i do i have this right the, the pride and the, you know, the way i look down upon people allah wala wala kotta labla do i have that right and the next thing ask 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 duas for every verse and remember duas are direct one to one connection with allah subhanahu wa taala you use all these four techniques bidni lai taala you will see that it will make a huge difference right because allah he doesn't want you to become angels all he wants is improvement alhamdulillah as long as you keep on improving allah rabbul alamin is happy and he is pleased with us so we are looking at improvement and we are looking at some drastic you know 180 degree change no we are looking at improvement i am a better human being than yesterday tomorrow i am a better than what i am today like it's like that right if you can keep doing this exercise continuously till you die inshallah taala you will see that invariably by allah's mercy you will keep on improving So may Allah subhanahu wa taala give us the tawfiq to understand this book in the way He wants us to, and may He give us the tawfiq to have a spiritual connection with His book, with His speech, and may He give us the tawfiq to be connected with Him, and may He give us the tawfiq to be with Him in a seat of honor. I mean, ya Rabbul Alamin.